Michael Cohen's former lawyer and legal advisor and a veteran of many White House conflicts, including uh, the Clinton era investigations. First of all, uh, this is a big news night for you and Michael Cohen. So thank you for coming on the beat, Lanny. Well, thank you for having me. And I am now back to being a legal advisor for the purpose of helping Michael through these congressional uh, inquiries. So let's start there. What does today's announcement, the first time Mr. Cohen has ever confirmed publicly that he will address the Congress and the public, what does this mean? Well, first of all, um, Michael's family is in severe distress, as is Michael, because he's going to be going to prison in about uh, six or seven weeks. And secondly, he wanted an opportunity after his life has been so virtually destroyed. He wants an opportunity to at least tell the truth, as he said to Mr. Stephanopoulos on July 2nd and recently, about what it was like working for a man in the private sector who lies, acts immorally or abusively, and has no barriers on ethics. What is it like when you actually realize that this very same man who Michael admitted to shamefully helping in his private sector job as an attorney, when he recognized this same man was now president of the United States, he wants to tell a story about what caused him to change and to now want to tell the truth how dangerous it is to have this very same man who acted this way in the private sector to have the powers of the presidency and how dangerous that is for his family and for his country. Will Mr. Cohen's testimony reflect uh, a very busy executive and candidate in Donald Trump who was out of the loop or a detail-oriented one who knew uh, what was going on on his behalf and, in, and inside the Trump organization? Well, he'll answer the questions truthfully, um, what uh, it was like working for Donald Trump. He has told me many times that nothing went on inside Trump Tower uh, that Donald Trump didn't know. It was kind of a, a rotating door in and out of his office. And he'll get into anecdotal, personal memories of what it was like to work for Trump. But I just want to clarify something earlier. The only time that Michael has admitted to lying was lying on Mr. Trump's behalf, not for Michael Cohen's benefit, but at the time, even consulting with the White House on the lie about the Moscow uh, Tower and that Trump was involved in those discussions all the way through, uh, even Mr. Giuliani says, through November of you're 2016. Saying, you're saying Michael Cohen consulted with White House staff about that misleading testimony to Congress? It's a matter of public record that he did uh, talk to White House officials, but which, the point is... Which, which officials? Well, I don't know uh, now and won't say now what specific officials. There are matters that Mr. Mueller is looking into that we are going to be careful about, but I did want to do make you think, the point... I'm going to let you make your point, but just on this, do you think that Mr. Cohen will be in a position to name names in that testimony? I don't know. We're still going to be looking for guidance from Mr. Mueller, as I know Mr. Cummings is. And I want to clarify and that how does, we have had... How does that... And I'll let you get there, but just while we finish this up, how does that work? Do you, uh, you know, lawyer to lawyer, Lanny, I got to do it. Do lawyer you and the other folks on this team proactively call the special counsel's office to find out the boundaries for this uh, testimony? Or how does this work? Because this is a somewhat unusual situation. Yes, for sure. Um, I know Mr. Cummings has, and I intend to be sure that the areas under investigations by Mr. Mueller and others, uh, he will not be able to answer. And I do want to get the opportunity in here to clarify, no agreement has been reached with either the Senate or the House Intelligence Committees, but I will say that during some conversations today, uh, I have to consult with my client, Mr. Cohen. There will be no need for a subpoena. We are voluntarily testifying before Mr. Cummings, and the truth will now empower Michael Cohen. The uh, MichaelCohenTruthFund.com is, I hope, going to be looked at by the American people to help Michael Cohen through this ordeal. And I also do want to remind you, Ari, that on this program, I mentioned the disproportionate prison time mm -hmm. that Michael Cohen is now forced to endure compared to many others who have much more grave offenses compared to his. So disproportionate 
injustice yep. is an issue that I hope uh, I will bring to the attention of the American people as I did first on your program. You mentioned two things. One is, is as you say, uh, how the federal prosecutors in New York handled this in the sentencing, which, as you mentioned, is something we've been reporting on uh, and, and discussed with you. Let's take both of the two points you just raised. First, you're referencing the, the fact that in addition to tonight's news that Mr. Cohen will address uh, the Democrats' uh, House request in the Oversight Committee, there's other discussions with other committees. So, Lanny, yes. when you say tonight that no subpoena is necessary, are you suggesting that you are close uh, to having a voluntary agreement to address other committees as requested? I have to consult with my client. This is all uh, very new today. But the answer is we have had constructive discussions. I don't want to name the specifics. But I know that Mr. Cohen wants to be voluntary, wants to be truthful. His days for lying for Donald Trump, being directed to do a crime of paying hush money to corrupt the presidential election, which he did at the direction of Mr. Trump, those days are over. He's now committed to telling the truth, and we will work with the other committees to answer your question to be voluntary rather than to be under a subpoena. Right. And so what I hear you to be saying is that it's very possible uh, that there could be an agreement for him to do more than one appearance, although you're not yet confirming that, and I, I take your point. As for the other issue uh, Ray. Uh, this came up earlier in the show with Nick Ackerman, who many of our viewers know, uh, who has Watergate experience. He was saying that it may be the case uh, that a truthful and full account before the House by Mr. Cohen could help uh, in reducing his sentence in the future through the legal process uh, that occurs. Is that, in your view, possible? Is it a goal that's been discussed? It's certainly my aspiration, my hope. And I will remind uh, your viewers that Mr. Mueller praised Mr. Cohen while also obtaining a guilty plea for the lies regarding the Moscow Tower matter, praised Mr. Cohen for cooperation. Even the Southern District of New York prosecutors praised him for being credible, and the judge did as well. I'm hoping, yes, the answer to your question, Ari, is that by looking at the actual length of the sentence, he's taken responsibility to all of the crimes that he confessed to in his allocution. But the length of the sentence, compared to others who have done far worse, to me, together with his testimony and his commitment to the truth, and let me remind your audience, he has already said he would not accept a pardon from Donald Trump if it was offered, and I am sure it won't be offered. He's committed to the truth. And the MichaelCohenTruthFund.com, I've got to give that a plug again, is about helping him and his family as he goes off uh, to prison for now a three-year term that I so hope I think, will be reduced. I think there's two ways to look at that. One is you're doing your job, which is advocating uh, for this individual that, you rep that you've represented. Uh, and he, he and his family have a great personal interest, obviously, uh, in any potential reduction of the sentence. Uh, the other way to look at it is for people who are simply following this at a distance and wondering who's telling the truth in an environment where I think you and I could agree Washington does not feel normal, uh, things do not seem to be working, and there's a lot of people accusing each other of lying, does the fact that Mr. Cohen have, that he has and his family has an incentive here to be truthful, to avoid or reduce prison time, does that, in your view, make him potentially a more credible witness against Donald Trump when he speaks to the House? Well, I would simply quote, the answer is yes, Ari. I would quote Mr. Mueller, who praised him for 70 hours and seven days of conversation and cooperation. And whatever credibility issues that have been raised that he has confessed to, I remind everyone, was for the benefit of Donald Trump and his admission to complicity in enabling Donald Trump when he worked for him in the private sector has now been converted into fear for our country and our family, knowing Donald Trump's flaws, deeply flawed character traits that we now are witnessing as endangering our country. I appreciate you coming here to share your views Thank on this you. big news night. As I was mentioning earlier, it's not every night in American history uh, that you have a situation like this, a former lawyer to a president uh, pledging to address the public under oath before he goes to prison. Uh, and as a, a past lawyer for that lawyer, I really appreciate you walking us through your perspective tonight, Lanny. Thank you for having me on, Ari. Thank hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.